Hey everybody, it's Jim and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now today, we're going to go over aliases. Now, what exactly is an alias? An alias is another name for a command or a string of characters. Now, why would you want to create a, another name for a string of characters? Well, say for example, it's a very long command. You can then take and make a very short name be equivalent to a very long command. Let's take a look at how we would first define an alias and then we'll give some more reasons for using them. So just to review, here is how we define a variable. We take the variable name on the left hand side, we have an equal sign in the middle, and we have the value on the right hand side. No spaces between the equals sign and the variable name and no space between the equal sign and the value. Now this is how we would assign or create a shortcut, an alias, excuse me. We start off with this word right here, alias. That says, hey, what you're going to see next is defining an alias. We then give the alias a name. In this case, it's shortcut. And we're saying that shortcut is now equivalent to whatever is in between those single quotes. So it is very similar to the definition of a variable. However, you just put the keyword or the corn shell command alias in front. Now, to get access to a variable, excuse me, to get access to the value within a variable, you put a dollar sign in front of the variable name. With an alias, you just type out the name of the alias, and Corn Shell knows enough that when it sees the alias name, it will automatically do the substitution for you. You don't need to put a dollar sign in front. Now, you may notice I use single quotes here, and I did that because sometimes the string on the right hand side might have double quotes. So to keep things from getting confusing, it's easier to have the outside quotes as single quotes. So let's look at some reasons why we would use aliases. Well, the first one is it creates shorter names for common commands. So here's our example. We're defining an alias called PSG and it is going to be equivalent to this right here. And we walk through what this does. PS is a Unix command that just says list processes. Dash E means for everyone, so it will list everyone's processes, everyone on the system that has an active process. The dash F component says I want a full listing, a listing that has a lot of details. And you may remember what this vertical pipe does. It says take the regular output from this command that would normally go to the computer screen and use it as the input for this command, which is grep. Grep is a pattern matching utility in Unix. And you run it by saying grep space pattern. So if any of this output right here matches a pattern after grep, then it will print that line. So in this example right here, PSG user 1, if there's any output from this right here that has the term user 1, it will get printed to the computer screen. It won't print any lines that do not have that pattern. And what this expands out to is this. So what happens is the computer, the corn shell, sees PSG, says, oh, I have an alias right here, and it substitutes this right here for PSG. So after the alias substitution, this command actually looks just like this. 
So you've just gone out and saved yourself some typing. Here's a, another example. So we start off with alias. We're saying P3N is equivalent to print double quote backslash N backslash N double quote. What this will do is it will print a backslash N which is a new line because the backslash N means don't print an N, print a new line. It will then print another new line and print by itself prints a new line. So this statement right here will print three blank lines. That's why it's called P3N. And you would run it just like this. It would expand out to this, which is just what is inside of those single quotes, and it would print three blank lines. Now another reason that you might want to use aliases is as a safety valve. So let's look at this. Alias print is equal to print space dash r. Well print is actually a corn shell command. And what we're saying to the corn shell is whenever you see print, please substitute print dash r. You may remember that the dash capital R allows you to start a string with a negative number or a dash. If you don't have this here, corn shell will think that a dash at the beginning is a flag that goes to your print statement. So in this case right here, what happens is corn shell will see print and it will substitute print dash r and we will get something that looks just like this. Another reason you may want to use aliases is it allows you to use better names. For example, now I didn't create this, this is actually built right into Corn Shell. There is a command called integer which allows you to find a variable to explicitly be an integer. And you would run it by saying integer space variable name. From that point on, that variable can only hold numbers. If you try to put a letter in it, it's not going to be happy. Well, this actually isn't a corn shell command. This right here is an alias for this. But who's going to remember typeset i? It's so much easier just to remember the word integer. So corn shell actually built into itself an alias called integer that is equivalent to typeset i. So let's look at a couple examples. We're defining an alias called D1, and it is equivalent to the word date. We're defining another alias called D1U, which is equivalent to date-u. This gives you your date in your local time zone. This gives you your date according to the universal time zone, which is the one that runs through England. Now the reason why I made these two is Corn Shell can distinguish between D1 and D1U. It knows enough to go to the end of the string before it figures out what alias name you have, or if at all you have an alias name. And our last example here is our safety valve, and it replaces the word print with print dash r. Once again, allows us to start a string that is going to be printed to our computer screen with a dash. So implementing those three aliases, we have print dash minus five, which will become print dash r, and then this string. D1, which will print the date. Excuse me, it will execute the date command. And D1U will execute this command. So let's run this script. And as you can see, it did print a minus 5 without complaining. And if we didn't have that dash R 
in the alias, it would have complained. It would have thought that the minus 5 was a flag that goes to the print statement. And as you can see, it prints the date, Eastern Daylight Time, and it prints the universal time right here, right after it. So our D1 alias worked, and our D1U alias also worked.